हेलो आदित्य हेलो बच्चों वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वेरी लास्ट टॉपिक आई एम गुड आई एम गुड आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेल एज वेल सब लोग घर पे आराम कर रहे होंगे आई एम श्योर जय श्री राम सिद्धार्थ एंड गुड आफ्टरनून सलोनी uh today we will discuss the very last topic or uh, it's a very brief topic that we are supposed to discuss that is uh, the legality or the change in uh, family law regarding same sex marriage that will change the whole uh, narrative or whole the whole system of marriages in india something that is uh, constantly asked the change that we are uh, seeing that is coming day by day every day we are seeing that sometimes some kind of change in the attitude is there in society regarding the marriages between the same sex partners we will discuss about that uh, afternoon priyanshi before that we begin uh, today we have viva for roll number 101 to roll number 114 uh, i want all of you anyone who is listening to this video please drop a message in the group that today we are finally going to have viva do give me a text mujhko text kariye and i'll give you a time for the viva we will begin our viva from 6 o'clock i have given time to some people already you will text me you will get a time uh, for viva and at that time you have to call me and we'll conduct the viva and get it done with we'll finish today ashman bhavan tinji or we'll finish our uh, academic session as far as teaching is concerned and project and viva is considered the only end semester exams will be left uh, which i am hopeful that university will decide soon that what is to be done with it the last topic which we are discussing this is going to be a brief half an hour lecture and i am going to tell you some very important things about how to best utilize this time that you have uh afternoon vivek and this time that you have uh in homes that you have nothing much to do so primarily first thing that uh, you should do is to read a book the first problem anyone who is listening should communicate it to everyone else as well that the problem that i have been seeing in dlu the only problem as such with such brilliant student and such great faculty the only problem that we have is that we are not reading textbooks हम लोग क्लास नोट्स पे रिलाय करते हैं हम लोग जो स्टडी मटेरियल दिया जाता है उस पर रिलाय करते हैं वी वी डू नॉट रेफर टेक्स्ट बुक जनरली इन मेनी ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट्स आई हैव हर्ड और आई हैव ऑब्जर्व दिस बट आई रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल काइंडली 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 रीड अ टेक्स्ट बुक अ प्रॉपर स्टैंडर्ड टेक्स्ट बुक सबसे आसान सबसे हल्की सबसे मुश्किल किताब नहीं सबसे आसान किताब भी नहीं सबसे मुश्किल किताब नहीं वन स्टैंडर्ड टेक्स्ट बुक of every subject you can ask your faculty if sir prescribe me a standard textbook just like i have said that paras diwan for hindu law and akil ahmed or rk sena for muslim law is one decent book family law one punam punam pradhan saksena is for family law two kusum is for family law one uh, family law that i was talking about for family law paras diwan is one author is universally accepted is a, it's a good book paras diwan for hindu law and for muslim law akil ahmed akil ahmed or rk sinha both are good books and uh, as far as uh, standard book is considered these are basic book as far as standard book is considered you can refer lexis nexis kusum dr professor kusum's book is there for family law one and for family law two is punam pradhan saksena so adit is asking bangya for torch bangya is a good book which i Uh, personally think that bangya helps us a lot it's one basic book that you should refer and uh, people crack judiciary just by reading bangya so it's often underestimated and sometimes hated by the people who are in academics obviously because it's way simpler bahut simple hai and it sometimes uh, gives you such satisfaction that you will not read a standard book you think okay i have read bangya i know everything so people generally don't refer a standard book but you should refer a standard book as well but bangya has its own utility mm, that uh, i will not say that it does don't doesn't have so that you can do ipc aap logon ki kharab hai this two months you are not going for internship so you read as much as you can 
I don't think internships will be there this semester. If it is there, it's fine. But if there is no internship, then please try to read books. Take a standard book of every. Dukhi, dukhi, don't, don't read that. Don't read that because obviously, if you are giving a final exam, you do not have read anything. Then obviously, it's fine. But basic books till third year, bacho, be very serious. Read a standard book because that will, ah, uh, will be the that is this is a time in which you will make your concepts and that concepts will live with you for the rest of your life. So V N Shukla, M P Jain, J N Pandey is also a basic book constitution. You know everything. If the faculty members, the respected faculties of uh, the particular subjects, would have prescribed books for you, read as much as you can. Do not waste this two or uh, two or uh, two and a half months, whatever you are getting. Prepare for the exams because at max when the university will open, we'll immediately have exams and you will not have any time to go through everything. So even if you don't have your books, find the content on the internet and start reading as much as you can. And rest of the video lectures are still with you only. So, but so the topic we we are going to discuss today is simply the concept of same-sex marriages. Now, I have read that there is a particular instance why it has been in news recently that uh, there is a particular matter in Kerala High Court. In Kerala High Court, there is a petition filed by two people known as Sonu and Nikesh Pushkaran. Sonu and Nikesh Pushkaran. This is a there are couple a homosexual couple they got married uh, by following the rituals in a temple they got married and they got married before the navtej in johar regiment two two months prior so they conducted a secret ceremony and they got married and after navtej in johar regiment when the even the sexual activity convincing adults was declared and uh, was declared constitutionally valid and section 377 in Section three seventy seven in respect of consenting adults was omitted. The they filed in January they filed a petition, ah, uh, which sought that the their marriage should be registered under Special Marriage Act. If you will see, they claim that their marriage, the Special Marriage Act particularly, they have said that we do understand that religion has a notion that uh, is not very much in favor of same sex marriages. If you will see, all the biblical religions. Uh, like uh, Christianity or Jews or Islam, all these religions, which are Abrahamic religions, they have a clear concept that the homosexuality in sin and any person doing homosexual activity will be punished by the God and the society in order to save themselves from the collective wrath of God that will fall if the homosexual activities are allowed in the society. They should stop those people. There is a particular. Uh, in, there is a biblical story which is also reflected in Quran. Quran that is of uh, Lut, L U T. If you will see, you will Google him. Lut as a prophet is a biblical prophet. He was a man of God, and uh, his tribe. He had a tribe in particular area is in in Middle East or something, and uh, his tribe people used to be involved in homosexual activities. And when Lut prohibited him, they rejected the notion. And uh, asked Luth to leave the community. And once Luth left his with his community, the God enforced wrath upon their people, and everyone was one was killed in the society because they allowed homosexual activity in the society. So that is one story on the basis of which all the religions, as such, like Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they have, uh, as per religious law, there is no concept of uh, homosexuality or as such recognition of homosexual marriages as far as the vedic or hindu texts are considered uh, the important major texts like rig vedas they do not have say anything about homosexuality they do not say anything about homosexuality although there are vedic verses which says that uh, uh, doing anything for sexual pleasure is fine uh, in that way they were very much open minded uh, because they said that uh, every person has a right to attain sexual pleasure and if they are doing it By any way, that is fine. But uh, in the uh, recent era, if you will come in, in, if in the life of Vedic scriptures, two thousand years ago, there is a famous book you all know, Kama Sutra, which clearly uh, stated many a times, at a time and again, it has stated that homosexual activities are vikriti, means something which is unnatural. Vikriti uh, is something that is not very much. Uh, 
in consonants with the regular. You will say irregular. The correct term for Vikriti is irregular. Suppose that someone is born with one hand or someone who is born with one eye, he is not unnatural as such, but he is irregular. So the homosexual tendency was considered irregular or a Vikriti in, uh, as such in uh, Kama Sutra and the uh, trend was uh, similar that the if these activities are not considered proper and the people who were involved in homosexual act were as such not punished in the Vedic society but they were considered as different or abnormal or some somehow. So the people wished that uh, just like we uh, always pray that no one of uh, one of us is infected by any disability that's like people pray to the God uh, that we get uh, children who are not uh, who, who are not infected by this uh, abnormality as such. So, this was a notion tha Vedas. Mein. But when Britishers come, they had their own religious ideas. IPC was framed with these ideas and they made it as a punishable offence. It was not as such offence under traditional Hindu law. Uh, but after the advent of uh, Islamic law in India and after that Britishers law, all of them had homosexuality as an offense, but still the concept of marriage was not there. But although you, you must know there is a very famous story of uh, uh, birth of Lord Ayappa. We were uh, not conforming with the standard, irregular that we say, uh, not standard. There is a particular very established story about Lord Ayappan. Lord Ayappan, we say, is very famous about the Shabri Mala temple is dedicated to him. And Lord Ayyappan is considered a celibate. And Lord Ayyappan has a very special status because he is considered to be the offspring of two males like Shiva and Vishnu. And because the, there is a particular demon who worshipped Brahmaji and Brahmaji gave him a boon just like always that you will be killed by the person who will be begotten, be, begotten by two men and with a, who will be born without an involvement of a woman. So again, this was a tough call and uh, Vishnuji and Shivji, they, uh, Vishnuji transformed himself into a female and they, they had a child that known as Ayyappan. And so this was an instance people cite in order to justify that there is a concept that when a man thinks himself to be a woman or he converts or he behaves like a woman, then the marriage or the union of those should be allowed because obviously uh, the the concept of that the Vishnu transformed himself. Vishnu is considered Purna Purush, yani ki complete the epitome of male uh, idea, the the masculinity epitome Vishnu. But he still transformed into himself into a female. That way, we thought that every man we we had a notion. If you read the Vedanta philosophy, there is a particular notion notion that every man has some fem feminine characteristics. And every female has some masculine characteristics. And it is perfectly fine for a person to change his ideas and characteristics and become a man can become a woman more and and a female can become more like a man. So that was a thing that was uh, somehow considered in Hindu religion or the Vedic texts were conforming to that. Lord Ayyappan's story is often you cited as something which makes the Indian philosophy is more tolerant towards homosexual behavior. But still, every verse that is refers to marriage in Vedas always talks about two people and they are always referred by their different gender between men and women. All, all the mantras of the Vedas, every uh, ritual of the Vedas, they are very strict in regard that the mantras are between men and women. Similarly, if you see Hindu marriage act, the, it never says, a section never says that the uh, marriage must be between a male and a male and a female, but they use the word bride and bridegroom. So the uh, present situation is that the bride and by bridegroom obviously establishes that there are two different people from two different uh, gender should be there. But now the question arises, that is the contention in the instant case that we are discussing today that the that the, the matter that is pending in Kerala High Court. So in that Kerala High Court, the question was whether we understand we it is accepted that the connotation is bride and bridegroom, but whether that identity of a bride and bridegroom must be biological or it can be psychological as well. 
हम उसमें कहना चाह रहे थे कि इफ अ मैन हिमसेल्फ थिंक्स हिमसेल्फ टू बी अ वुमेन व्हाई सिंस ही इज डिक्लेयरिंग हिमसेल्फ टू बी अ ब्राइड ग्रूम व्हाट द व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ सोसाइटी सो दैट दे कैन से नो यू आर जेनेटिकली और बायोलॉजिकली अ मेल सो यू कैन नॉट डिजाइग्नेट योरसेल्फ यू यू कैन नॉट आइडेंटिफाई योरसेल्फ एज अ फीमेल ऑफ कोर्स आफ्टर द जजमेंट ऑफ दैट कॉमन कॉज uh the judgment uh, of uh, in the case of common cause the, where they have nalsa judgment after they, they have recognized the uh, third gender as an official gender and we have judgments uh, if you will refer your notes i have said that the marriage between eunuchs yani ki transgender marriage um, of a man with a transgender was still allowed in in, in hindu marriage act hindu marriage act allows the transgender well as it has in the most liberal religion as such no religion is liberal but obviously there is no sanction as such because hinduism is more about uh, the worship and less about the laws so it's liberal in that aspect that you will find an argument for everything because there is no single book of authority and there are thousands and thousands of books so if you will try to find something which suits your idea you will find if you will try to find a uh, verse which will justify the use of weed and uh, cocaine and heroin and chaz you will find that as well there are thousands of verses which condemn alcohol and thousands of verses which allow alcohol so this idea is he, do as you think fit because the god has uh, sought it fit that you apply your own brain and decide what is good for you be a seeker of your own truth that is the essence of not as such hinduism but the essence of indian philosophy or indian religion whatever the idea they have been developed in india in past 3 or 4000 years there is one constant thought that is multiplicity of truth when the judgments the supreme court uh, gave an uh, definition a uh, basic rudimentary definition in the uh, 1900 and some 20 the court said that it is simply one basic idea one basic idea of every indian religion that is there are multiple truths there are multiple truths if you understand you are well within the domains of indian religion so the question was that uh, you have your own interpretation so the question that was basically that whether the notion of bride and bridegroom will be associated with the biological entity of the parties or it can be associated with the psychological entity of a party which can be different from his biological entity जैसे एक व्यक्ति हो सकता है शरीर से पुरुष हो पर साइकोलॉजिकली ही इज अ फीमेल मीन्स सेक्शुअल ओरिएंटेशन व्हेन वी से अबाउट आर्टिकल 15 इट डज नॉट मेंशंस जेंडर बट इट मेंशंस सेक्स व्हेन वी से इट मेंशंस सेक्स इट मींस इट आल्सो इंक्लूड्स सेक्शुअल ओरिएंटेशन दैट नो पर्सन शैल बी डिस्क्रिमिनेटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सेक्शुअल ओरिएंटेशन सो व्हेन वी से सेक्शुअल ओरिएंटेशन शैल इज समथिंग डिफरेंट कैन बी इज रिकॉग्नाइज्ड दैट अ पर्सन कैन हैव different sexual orientation on the basis of sexual orientation he will not be punished or will not be discriminated against so when we say that uh when we say that the sexual orientation can be different so this uh, petition i have read that petition if you will google it you can find it in live law as well the, the by the, that the case couple from kerala they argued that the special marriage act it does not say specifically about male and female they just use the word bride and bridegroom so they have a clear contention that we should allow a person who is even a male to identify himself as bridegroom or if a if a, there is a girl who identify wants to identify herself as groom uh, then it is perfectly fine if a man wants to identify himself as bride that's perfectly fine this is something that is uh, demanded in that petition and uh, we are all hoping that the kerala high court will give some a very rational judgment and we can see if there can be a change in the laws but uh, the concept of marriage if you see the anthropological uh, concept of marriage or when i have told you in the class the purpose for marriage is primarily procreation so procreation is something which is the primary concern of marriage and since a heterosexual a homosexual couple cannot have as such uh, by the normal process by the biological process they cannot have a child they will have to rely on the technology that we have 
although we have very sound technologies right now we can have a uh, women donate the uh, genetic material the eggs or something and the can be same can be fertilized and in vitro fertilization is also something which is which can be seen as a viable option as such so something or uh, the other can be done uh, we saw an adoption law a person can adopt a child even though he is not in a heterosexual relationship so not allowing a person to be uh, called as a husband or a couple as such it poses some problems number one that if two there is a homosexual couple they cannot adopt a child they cannot go for surrogacy they cannot have joint health insurance they cannot have joint bank account there are n number of cases n number of disabilities that are homosexual couple faces now which they seek to address that the homosexual couples have approached the supreme court or high court different high courts uh, the kerala high court judgment case is one of them and they in time and again it has said that it is a discrimination to not allow the homosexual couples to have the same privilege as the heterosexual couple now the question again comes that do we are we supposed to call it marriage because marriage is somehow has a overtone of a religious sacrament or a religious uh, uh, institution so in the in the us these types of relationships are called in a, in a domestic relationship or in a domestic partnership or in a civil union the uh, the correct word for uh, the uh, homosexual marriages is called civil union <laughs> so many of the people are suggesting that we should call it civil union and uh, make a provision for the same uh, i'll tell you about some uh, other countries who have legalized these types of activities uh, the united states of america a judgment you can read is lawrence versus texas the judgment is lawrence versus this is a judgment you can read lawrence versus texas uh it judgment 9215 in 2015 the united states of america same sex same sex activity was allowed in 2003 since 2003 the same sex sexual activity was allowed and in 2015 in the case of obergefell versus hoges i'll write the judgment these are two important judgments in which uh, the supreme court allowed same sex marriages become legally valid in all states of united states uh, by the decision that was given by the supreme court the supreme court gave a decision in the ober ober gesell versus hodges that same sex marriages shall be allowed throughout america in uh, prior to that in different states there was different laws but it was allowed in all of america from 2015 from 2003 the same sex same a uh, gender sexual activity was allowed and in 2015 the marriages were also recognized similarly in united kingdom united kingdom the same sex activity was always legal for women It means lesbianism was always legal but as far as the sexual activity between two males it was considered it was uh, legalized in 1967 in england and 1980 in scotland and 1982 in northern ireland there are three major components of great britain uh, england it was legalized in 1967 then in uh, scotland in 1980 and in, in 1982 northern ireland became the last part of united kingdom that allowed the uh, same sex sexual activity for men as well the lgbt marriages was recognized and accepted by england in 2000 year 15 but it is still not recognized in northern ireland in 2014 the same sex marriages were allowed in england 2014 mein america it was 2015 but in england 2014 it was allowed in australia similarly from 1997 the same sex sexual activity was allowed and the same sex marriage has been allowed since 2017 yani this has been a trend 
in america same sex marriages was allowed in 2015 in england 2014 in australia 2017 it was allowed uh, in the later part of 20th century the same sex marriages was allowed same sex sexual relationship was allowed and eventually in the first part of this 21st century 14 15 17 17 all the types of sexual uh, marriages are also allowed while coming to not going very far in this part of the world nepal is our one protectorate as such is a one neighbor country which has uh, shown an enormous progressive attitude regarding this the lgbt community the provisions uh, regarding recognizing the different sexual uh, uh, orientation so recognized from 2007 only it became fundamental right the same sex sexual activity was allowed and being of a different biological and genetic or psychological orientation was allowed सिंस टू थाउजेंड में ही सारी चीजें अलाउ कर दी गई इन इन नेपाल बट द सेम सिक्स मैरिज एज सच इज स्टिल नॉट काउंटेड एज मैरिज बट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डोमेस्टिक पार्टनरशिप इज स्टिल देयर एंड सिंस सम हाउ नेपाल इज वे मोर टॉलरेंट एंड प्रोग्रेसिव देन इंडिया इन दिस रिगार्ड सिमिलरली डेनमार्क नीदरलैंड फ्रांस कैनेडा नॉर्वे ब्राजील आइसलैंड all these countries have gone through changes and they have adopted a mechanism which allows for same sex marriage as such and they have decriminalized the sexual activities between two consenting adults of any of any gender so that is uh, the uh, current position of law there are some countries in which it is prohibited and punishable as well while it is while the punishability of the same is considered india no longer no longer holds the homosexual activities as punishable but it does not recognize the marriage as well but there are countries which still have the law that punishes the sexual acts between two uh, consenting adults if they are of same gender uh, the of obviously the all the countries of middle east all as such pakistan afghanistan iran and uh, out of uh, 22 countries 22 countries out of 56 african countries they have allowed they have legalized homosexual activities but still there are 34 countries who holds this as crime in sri lanka also the lgbt community is not recognized and they are subjected to much harassment uh, although sri lankan government 2017 they are thinking about a plan of decriminalizing it but it is still not realized in syria and all all other middle east countries the homosexual activities are punishable by death there are more than 60 countries in the world right now in which homosexual activities are punishable by death most of them are islamic countries of middle east and some of the countries on south asia as such like pakistan and afghanistan it is punishable offense so we see in in india we are uh, on a path of recognizing the same sex marriages as well but let's see how much time it will take uh, this 10 years prior to this uh, navdeep singh johar judgment no one was ready to recognize that some day the section 377 can be altered and uh, now it has been changed so everyone uh, we cannot be assured that uh, within 5 or 10 years the same sex marriage will also will not have legal sanction but i i think the supreme court will eventually 4 year 5 year 10 year whatever the time it will take but the civil union or the same sex marriages will be may be given some recognition in india as well so this is the correct position of law and this is the last topic that we are supposed to discuss as per your syllabus we are officially finished with the lectures of the of our uh, fourth uh, th- third this is fourth semester ha huh? fourth semester family law 1 we are done with in the next semester we'll have to study about lot more i have cut some some of the portions of family law 1 have incorporated in family law 2 because uh, i hope that we'll get more time when we'll be in the next semester so kindly keep reading on all of these uh, please drop again a text message in the group 
that everyone who have not given the viva kindly give viva drop me a text on my number or drop me a mail i'll give you i'll schedule a time for your viva and we'll have to finish from 6 o'clock in the evening i'll be taking viva rest yesterday many of you called me and gave their viva thank you so much and kindly tell your friends request your friends communicate it to your friends that today is the last day for giving viva today i'll have to submit the report that who have given their viva and who have not if your name is not in that list you will be marked zero or something like that whatever the university team fit but kindly 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 uh, ensure that you have given your viva by today uh, drop me a message and i'll give you a time in which you are supposed to call me and we'll finish with the viva uh, sir can a court take defense of not having liberal interpretation of law and therefore we cannot recognize a particular right obviously what is right and what is not right will be decided by the court only na article 21 is a is a right which is uh, suppose uh, is like a sky asman ki tarah it it has enormous there is no uh, restriction on it so the supreme court can interpret in any way it, it may deem fit supreme court when it is deciding if we are talking about this is the context we are talking about if the supreme court deems it fit they can interpret article 21 in any manner they that they can so it is mostly upon judiciary because i don't think the present government for the next 5 years they are planning to bring a law to allow same sex marriage but if the supreme court will say so i don't think the government will uh, uh, create a hindrance to that but the government on of its own because being supported by a very conservative set of people who are uh, very much uh, conscious about the social dynamics that we have today so it is difficult for the government to take this unpopular decision but a supreme court judgment since supreme court is not bound by public pressure and supreme court judgment provides a very good defense for the current government to implement some reforms uh, earlier the reforms were made by the governments but nowadays this obligation must be discharged by the supreme court because they don't have to go for election they can make some unpopular moves and the when the government will uh, implement those moves they can always have a shield that okay we are not doing it our own supreme court said so the supreme court has done this so this is how the we are will see that the changes will come the, the reforms will come in a society all of the things that we see in family law like women right of adoption or that has been made because of the supreme court have given judgments indicating that supreme court's judgment in relation to uniform civil code has always given an idea uh, and uh, inspiration for the governments to make such laws which are uh, religion neutral like uh, we have said that there is guardianship and wards act there is juvenile justice act there are n number of laws which are now uh, religion neutral and we are still are uh, talking and thinking about making a uniform civil code and uh, if the supreme court decides that uh, the in uniform civil code will have to uh, we should incorporate a provision related to same sex marriage then i think the government will abide by the wishes of the supreme court and uh, let's see how it goes eventually in the coming future so i thank you all for attending these online lectures and offline lectures we are done with the semester Uh, classes for this semester. If you have any doubts, I am available all time. Uh, it's a, it's an honor to be with you. We'll uh, continue our discussion on family law in the next semester. In the next semester, we'll uh, we will discuss about some very more interesting aspects of family law related to succession. Uh, maximum cases of succession we'll discuss. So thank you so much. We are done for this semester. I'll see you in the next semester. Till now. when we'll meet in the next semester i expect you all to at least read the basic books of family law kam se kam kitabein aap log dhang se padh ke aayega kitabein padh ke nahi aayenge fir maza nahi aayega to padh ke aaiye raise your level of preparedness hai na make me struggle in the class i that is i am hoping itna padh ke aaiye ki teacher ki class mein andar jaane mein dare teacher samajh rahe hain aap log so that is what i expect you from expect from a crowd of national university so stay safe and uh, please give viva today communicate to everyone uh, i request all of you who are listening to this lecture 
drop a message in the group that those who have not given the viva kindly give your viva because today we'll have to finish our academic program for this semester so thank you so much we are done for the day thank you mission listeners off we go jai hind vande mataram i'll see you in the next semester if you have any questions i'll always be available on my phone or email we'll communicate if you reading any case you don't understand anything please 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 do contact me